Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clips. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This is episode 272. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clips is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clips singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio today is my co-host, Simeon Bruce. How's it going, Calder? It's going fantastic. And just like every week, we like to start off with what made us happy. So do you want to go ahead and take a swing at that? Yeah, this new Impossible Whopper that uh, Burger King has is just my new favorite. No, that's not right. Is that it? Is uh, that an Impossible Whopper? No, no. I'm Google it. Have, did you not know this? No, I didn't know Are it. You, you, oh, can yeah. you can tell you it's, it's actually happy. I got to look at this Impossible Whopper really quick. I was going to say this episode is not brought to you by the Impossible Whopper. Except um, it totally is now. I believe that Burger King should uh, feed you meat because that's their whole thing. Yeah. I mean, Burger oh, it King is, can do no, what they want to do. Whopper zero. Beef. Okay, no, no, I'm against this now. Ugh, that's weird. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, let's get off side. this now. I'm actually really <laughs> egg, soy, we Okay, yeah, no, this is gross. Never mind. All right, so let's talk about something more positive than this disgusting sandwich. <laughs> uh, well, this last weekend, I uh, went up to Niobrara, and I got my my uh, camp on. I did some, like, some floating, some kayaking. I went and saw some waterfalls. I did the whole, like, you know, reclaim nature and sanity thing. Got away from from TV and from phones and all that stuff. So that was really nice. That's what I did. Okay, right on. That's dope. I uh, I know I've been in Ibrae a couple of times, and it's pretty fun. It's always a good time. I go kayaking there. It's actually been a couple of years, but, but yeah, normally me and my family have to go out there. It's pretty great. It's a great, uh, it's a great place to hang out. It's a good country down there. Yeah, it's part of Nebraska that does not look like 90% of Nebraska. Yeah, it's not flat. It's weird. It's like, huh, there's, there's like, hills and stuff out here. What the heck is going on? Waterfall? What, the, what, the, what? <laughs> what in the wild, wild world of sports going on here? So many waterfalls. Yeah. No, it's Little tiny I mean. ones. And it's kind of crazy. Big, when big you old drop down ones. them, like, the, even the little ones. It's like, ooh, give you a little rush there. I like that. Yeah. Um, what made me happy this week was a friend enlightened me. Uh, this isn't. I'm gonna just like preface this. This is like a PG-13 kind of video. It's uh, Max Landis's death and return of Superman. Do you know what this is, Superman? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know about this, and I'm honestly offended that no one had told me until now. It's probably the funniest 16 minutes I've ever seen. I don't like Superman as character. Most people uh, probably know that. Um, and this was just a hilarious video kind of talking about how ridiculous the death and return of Superman was uh, comic book wise. And uh, I thought it was great, especially there. There's like actual actors in it. Like he basically does a drunk history retelling. This is like in 2011. I don't know if drunk history was out yet or not, but that's basically how he does it. But death and return of Superman. So it's definitely great. You check it out. I'll probably link it in the podcast show notes. Along with that, there was Sebedecon in Watertown. It was a quick little one-day convention here in South Dakota. They had me as a guest. Lord knows why. And I uh, talked about making props, talked about a little bit of cosplay. I emceed the cosplay competition. And because someone didn't show up, not going to name it, Jake, um, I had to help judge the cosplay competition, which I was not prepared for. I'm like, who am I to judge anyone else's like work or whatever? But it still went really well, and I think we were pretty like fair, uh, objectively speaking. So that was really fun. I had a great time, and it was just really dope. So yeah, Sabeticon was pretty great. And with that, ladies and gents, we have a huge week of news time. We have WWE rules finally coming to light. We have four days of Scott Porter previews plus... Eternal Games previews and Da Vinci previews to talk about it. So without further ado, let's jump into the news. Yeah, I mean, the news is just 90% X-Men like it is. 
Um, I love uh, Smaug here, and that's who we're going to kick it off uh, first from the, the Da Vinci previews, uh, is Vange Whedon, X-Men Animal Monster, 6 Range 1, Bolt, Flight Ability, Indom, and the, whatever, the big old fist. I always forget it's giant size, colossal, whatever. Uh, fist is colossal. Colossal, yeah. Some people call it Tombstone, and I don't Tombstone. know. Tombstone! I don't know where that came from. That was, i tell you right now where it came from. It was, I was trying to remember, it was like an Aries Edge live video giveaway for International Exchange. And it was, give me your funniest hero clicks story, right? Hold up. Aries Edge did a live video? I know he never does those, right? It's weird. That's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, I've never man. seen that guy do them. Um, <laughs> so it was really out of character for him to do that. So I thought it was really crazy. Um, but anyways, this live video, and it was basically just one of the stories, it was this person's uh, significant other, like wife or girlfriend or something like that, uh, always thought it was a tombstone. And then there was like a meme where someone just made, where it was like the fist symbol, and then um, the tombstone move performed by that one wrestler that likes to come back to life and make his eyelids go white. Not eyelids, but his eyes. You know what I'm talking about. You know, taker. Uh, doing the yeah, tombstone. Yeah, Mysterio. Yeah, Rey Mysterio. Um, <laughs> man, talk about a guy with some drama last week in WWE. Some Rey Mysterio drama was going on for anybody who's current. Okay, we're kind of getting off track. That's where Tombstone comes from. It's like a story someone told. Uh, Van Whedon, Smaug, has a trait. Dragonic, Draconic, whatever. Metamorph. At the beginning of the game, you may turn Van Whedon to click 25. Her starting click doesn't change. So you can still pay 275, 175, or 75 for her. She'll just begin the game on 26, which will sort of buy you, instead of having an attacker right away, it'll have someone who can absorb one click of damage uh, in a way. So let's just go ahead and look at that starting click. It is 6 speed with earthbound neutralize. This is a very thematic use of it. 8 attack with nothing, 16 defense with a special defense power, and then she'll have a 1 damage outwit. So she will have a 6 range outwit, which is kind of helpful. And then it is human until splashed by blood, which makes me wonder, how does she get into the dragon form without someone like the you just like cut yourself and just be like blood all right dragon time like that's kind of also like, could it accidentally happen like you get a paper cut yeah and now all of a sudden you're in an office building and you're the size of a dragon like you're just chilling at xavier's school you scuff your elbow like you cut yourself like in the kitchen or whatever and you're like oh man you just blow out a room or whatever just turn into a ginormous <laughs> dragon like that's a pretty pretty bad way to turn into something so anyways uh when Van Reden is normal size, instead of giants or colossal size, uh, and Van Reden or an adjacent friendly character would take damage, they don't take the damage. This is kind of cool. So if there's just a friendly character who's going to get shot for like five or six, something crazy, you can just be like, all right, they don't take the damage, and instead you turn her to her starting click, whichever that was, protected pulse wave and out wave. This can be kind of kind of cool, kind of helpful, uh, depending on who's on your team and depending whether or not you want to play her at 275. Uh, she also has a special attack power on some of her clicks. These are only on her charge clicks and never on a starting line, which is Blades Claws Bangs when Vange Whedon makes a close attack and hits. After resolution, steal one damage and give an action token to another opposing characters within two squares and line of fire. So it's, you hit him with a tail, bite him with a teeth, hit him with a tail, sort of distraction weird thing. So that's kind of cool. Uh, top Dial is the only click she has. Penetrating Psychic Blast this is 275. She has 12 speed running shot, 12 attack, pen blast, 19 defense with that. Uh, special pink power, and then five damage with shape change. And on her second starting line at 175, she has running shot, energy explosion, impervious with a four with shape change. And then, I guess I lied, actually, she does have uh, her special cool fangs power on one starting line. At her 75 points starting line, she only has five clicks of life, or potentially six if you want to do whatever one way. And she has the charge, blade, special power, uh, invulnerability, and battle fury. I think at 275, with maybe if you get like a Sentinel or something and sealed, she could be really solid. 17 clicks of life, running shot, pen blast, 5 damage, you can get like an alpha off, and you know, like carry that Sentinel up and like place it in front of you, or just move the Sentinel up, place it in front of you. Like, I think this is, number one, a really cool figure, and a pretty solid uh, Smaug interpretation. If you want it to be Smaug, it looks like Smaug, it's a red dragon. And it has a beefy enough dial, I'd say, um, to represent that for your Lord of the Rings games. Uh, so, yeah, that's banned. I just want to talk about her because I dig the dragon stuff, you know. You get a Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. sculpt swap. Exactly. And see voice. He was in smart. Star Trek or whatever. Like, yeah. Was there a con we could sculpt swap with him? Uh, no. Not like a movie one that I remember. Sadly, no. Uh, we don't even have a Doctor Strange figure either. Oh, it sucks. 
not an MCU not one, no. Movie, yeah, not a movie one. So sad. So that's Vintage. It, that was by uh, Da Vinci Games as well. <clears throat> yeah. It's a super cool sculpt. I like it. Oh, it's dope. Uh, Are you All right. with the Mr. Thing, Sinister? <laughs> yeah, the thing I decided to cover from... This was also from Da Vinci, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. So I decided to cover the Danger Room Danger Mr. Room. Sinister. So we saw the whole Danger Room construct trait with uh, Magneto, like one of the first previews we got. Um, he gets a error token for each time he makes an attack and has a one in the attack roll. When he has three... He can take normal damage or deal normal damage up until the point where he has three. He's only taking one or dealing one. But the cool thing is he's got a special speed power, phasing teleport, sidestep, and stealth, sinister schemes, and logistic processing. And on his top three clicks, he's got a special damage power, secrets and mysteries, which is outwit and shape change. So for 40 points... You get a guy that can take one, two, three, four, five hits before he dies, and he's got shape change on every single click. Um, other than that, I mean, he's good. He's just a solid tie-up piece and really good for his points and sealed. Uh, he doesn't really offer a whole lot offensively. He's got some poison top dial, uh, three damage on his first three clicks, and then it goes to four damage with running shot Pensai on his last two. Um, he probably won't ever do the full damage, but you can always ping somebody for one, so that's good. Oh, and he sees through stealth, so yeah, you can outwit solid. people in stealth. That's a pretty big deal. I think for 40 points, he's a really great uh, support tie-up piece, like 100%. I really, uh, I really like that for sure. Marauders and Robot. We're seeing a lot of robots in the Sentinel area of the world, so you may be able to make a generic theme team out of robot if, like, map is super important to you. But overall, I think all these Danger Room constructs are just really dope. Yeah, I think in, like, a sealed setting, you'll probably be breaking theme to add him to it, but oh, just for not. the... Just for like the turn, like the two turns or maybe three turns that he's going to buy you by tying somebody up, it's probably worth it. And he's number 043B. I'm hoping that he comes like Legion did with zero, you know, he had the A and the B sculpt like together. I'm Ooh. hoping this Mr. Sinister does that because otherwise we basically have two super rare primes. And that'd be sad for me. Yeah, I'm wondering how the, I don't know how to put it, the whatever for the set, uh, what do you call it? The spread. But if there's a cooler word for it, spread. Um, yeah, the basically, distribution. Distribution. So, Scott, if we, if you guys don't know, pulled two Super Rare Colossals, one uh, Danger Room figure in Magneto, and he also pulled a Chase Emma Frost, or whatever. He pulled a Chase, basically. So he pulled two Super Rare Colossals, which... In one brick, in AI, you only ever got one Colossal, super rare, and then you maybe got a chase, or you got like a prime, or two primes, like whatever. So we got, I don't know if these Danger Rooms are going to count as primes, maybe they won't. Maybe they actually won't be prime rarity, and they'll just be slot rarity of whatever figure they're taking. So maybe this uh, Sinister is only just a super rare rarity, for all we know, and it's not technically a prime. Since there are Colossal primes and figure primes already, um, but it's very interesting that it just has seemed it seems to have better distribution than AI did, so that's cool. Yeah, which yeah, it's great for the secondary market. Oh, for it, shizzle. I mean, it means like some of these super rare colossals won't cost you like fifty bucks a piece, which is nice because some of them are definitely lining up to be super expensive, like Iceman here. Smooth transition, Coggle. Thank you, Coggle. Uh, Iceman is Champion Defenders X Factor X Men in armor. It's Bobby Drake as a giant freaking Voltron robot thing, and it's dope as heck. He has one trait, chill. It's just a giant ice sword. Blades, claws, fangs. When Iceman KOs a giant or colossal character, after resolutions, he can use charge at no cost, but may only attack a character with giant or colossal. He may repeat this. So he has mini Vulture-ish like power here, but only to kill other giants so he's all about that big anime mech dude killing other mechs it's pretty great i dig it a lot i think it's really really sick 
um, in sealed, he could maybe uh, get some more extra hits off after he runs up. And then in modern, he can like retile and then uh, go try to kill some more colossals. He also has a stop click, which is colossal indifference, ice robot. Uh, stop. If Iceman started the game on the 15 point starting line, he can't attack smaller characters except by a colossal retaliation. Now his colossal retaliation is Glacier Fists. Blah, blah, free. If no friendly character has been placed this turn, choose an opposing character that attacked Iceman or damaged a friendly character since your last turn. Place Iceman such that he can make a close attack targeting the chosen character, then do so. After resolutions, immediately use in cap at no cost, but only target smaller characters. So. Let's, uh, I gotta click through these previews the right way. Let's double check, let's see what he's got. So he has in cap, he has zero range, sadly, on this big old ice robot. Uh, his bottom dial, which is just a colossal retail dial, is five with charge on speed, 11 attack with nothing, 17 defense with that indifference, stop click, and then three damage with the retail. That's like okay. He also has the X Men keyword and team ability, which means he's amazing X Men filler, which is really dope. So he can come in, he can colossal retaliate. Misses, whatever. He can go ahead and charge maybe some more Colossals if he's down the map. He has 300, 200, and 100 point lines. They all have charge to start off with. Uh, his top one has 13 speed, 13 attack, 18 defense, invincible uh, charge, and then 5 damage battle fury. His next one is kind of the same thing. Just the stats go all down by 1 or by 2 on speed. And then his 100 point line, which I think is probably his most solid and sealed since it'll get you 7 clicks of life with a stop click. I think it's pretty cool. It's... Uh, 11, 11 speed charge, 12 attack, nothing. He never has an attack power, except because, you know, he's traded blades. And then he's 18 defense, impervious, 3 damage without wit, and then he moves on some battle fury sidestep toughness, and then of course he has that stock click, which is pretty cool. With Indom, he's not a bad figure. I think he's for sure going to be popping up on a lot of uh, X-Men meta teams, because this set is just like giving X-Men, just like, hey, look, Vulture really took a lot of wind out of your sails, guys. We're really sorry about that. Here, we apologize. Here's a bunch of really just insane X-Men figures. So that's that's basically Iceman. I'm excited. He's exactly kind of everything I wanted him to be, which is dope. So, yeah, I'm very happy with him. Yeah, I remember joking back when Tri-Sentinel was, like, first spoiled, how cool it would be to get uh, an X-Men keyword with retaliation. <laughs> And uh, it's kind of getting scary. Now we have like three. This guy, like, you could potentially like real boy him. What was his bottom dial? Oh yeah, it's fifteen. Point cost. Uh, so yeah, so, so if you had the X Jet, call him literally real boy anything. Him. You can real boy him yeah. in like turn one. It's insane. And uh, when you real boy him in, he doesn't poof with outside of five squares. Yeah. So he could retail across the map that turn, and well. I guess it depends on, like, the whole placement power thing. But he could retail and wipe out an entire team of Colossals pretty yeah. easily, I think. Um, or, alternatively, like, you could call him in. He could do his retail thing. He could potentially hit another giant or Colossal. And then he can just charge outside of that five squares without making an attack and just poof that way, too. So he's got, like, all kinds of options for... The crazy, crazy play stuff. Right on. Right on. All right. I'm going to talk about Mr. Sinister again. See, you just talked about Mr. Sinister. Uh, what, I know. What are you I doing? have a way of repeating myself. Um, <laughs> this is number 043A, Mr. Sinister Rogue Geneticist. Uh, he is a title character, real name Nathaniel Essex. He has Marauders, Savage Land, Past, and Scientist. Uh, he's got one trait, Leader of the Nasty Boys. The bystanders printed on this card are Nasty Boys. I mean, he has two traits, technically. I don't want to be well, critical about it. His first trait, <laughs> just see inside. See inside. Come on, children. Uh, <laughs> so, let's look at what uh, what the Nasty Boys are. We'll start with them. He's got four nasty boys on his card. Slab. They, they sound nasty, too. <laughs> yeah, their that. names are pretty cool. Uh, slab. He's got six speed, sidestep, ten attack, blank, uh, 17 impervious, and close combat expert. So that's like your your close heavy hitter. Uh, none of these guys have uh, indom. So you're not going to want to be pushing them, but... Apparently, I mean, Slab could get to a 12 attack for 3 damage or an 11 for 4, so that's your your close combat guy there. 
Then you've got Ruckus. He's got seven speed, force blast. He's got pulse wave with six range, three damage. Uh, he's got a 17 blank defense, and his special de- or special damage power is listen up, boys. Leadership. When Ruckus uses it and succeeds, instead of the normal effects, he may re- may remove an ad- action token from an adjacent friendly bystander, which will probably be one of the other nasty boys, I imagine. Um, then we've got Gorgeous George, who's got Plasticity, 8-speed Plasticity. He's got Fluid Body as his special attack power. It's end cap and Giant Reach of 4. And he's got a 16 defense with Super Senses. So I don't really know that character at all. I remember the other two, but I don't remember Gorgeous George or what he did. But he must have just been like a kind of like a Mr. Fantastic kind of dude. Something like that. I don't know. Giant Reach 4 is cool, though. Yeah, that's Giant Reach 4 is pretty crazy. That's more than Colossals. Yeah. Um, then the last but not least is Hairbag. He's got Charge 7 speed, so he can charge 4 squares. He's got a 10 attack with Blades and a 16 defense with Toughness. So, really, I think I'm probably popping Slab out or Ruckus out most of the time. But let's look and see how we get those guys out of there. Um, on the inside of Sinister's card, we've got his title character abilities. Uh, the big one, when he is KO'd, you deal one unavoidable damage to each other character on your force. And it doesn't say within like a certain amount of range or anything, so it's just Man. everyone that's on your force and it's still like alive. kills all the nasty boys, and then it'll any, yeah, kill Yeah, any them. nasty boy there, um, if you're for some reason running Sinister with like Groot, or something like that. It's going to kill your walking woods and all your retaliators. and So that's pretty rough. Um, but let's look at his positives. Uh, his plus one. Free. This turn, when Mr. Sinister, Rogue Geneticist, or a Nasty Boy hits, give a hit character a DNA sample token. If that character already has a DNA sample token, gain one additional plot point. So when you use this, you already have to make an attack with Sinister so that he doesn't take unavoidable damage when he's using plot powers. So when you use this, you'd have a potential ability to give them the DNA sample token, and then your next turn you could go from plus one plot point to plus three with just like that one attack. His second plot ability is a minus zero, which I think is the first minus zero we've seen. I think maybe Loki had it, but I don't remember. Uh, my plans are my plans come to fruition free this turn when Mr. Sinister rogue geneticist attacks a character with one or more DNA sample tokens modify attack and damage X where X is plot points which hmm. if you get that up to plus three plot points so like you know after the second attack that you make on a character uh, you potentially have three plot points then you get to start doing plus three damage and then his only, he's only got one, a minus one ability, and that is Nasty Boy's attack. Free, generate a Nasty Boy bystander. Each distinct Nasty Boy bystander has max one. So he does have to have at least one plot point to generate his Nasty Boys, and he starts with zero, which means there's not going to be any instantaneous, uh, you know, like Nasty Boy on on the field as soon as you can kind of thing. It's going to be at least turn two. But let's let's look at his dial, because he's actually fairly solid for 100 points. He's got six range. He's 100 points. Um, seven speed with stealth, his first two clicks. He's got 11 attack with precision strike, his first two clicks. On click one, he's got an 18 with invincible and three damage with outwit. He's indom. On click two, he goes from invincible to impervious. He loses outwit and gets perplex. And then from there, it's kind of downhill. He goes to a six speed with sidestep. He gets ten attacks. He does get ranged combat expert. And then his last two clicks, he's going to have more stealth and regen with some perplex. So honestly, is click two's probably better, especially with stealth. If your opponent can't see through stealth, then that impervious isn't too bad, and you could perplex somebody down and potentially 
give your chance your nasty boys a chance to attack. But I I think this guy's just a fun piece. I don't see him making a splash in anything. Honestly, I don't even think he'd do great in sealed. Mm. But I've seen a lot of stuff that does a lot more for a hundred points. Yeah, for sure. Get out to uh pour one out for Mr. Sinister here. Just not yeah. not vibing with him, I guess. It's really Yeah, weird. just not the nastiest of the nasty boys, sadly. Sadly. Even though Hello there, welcome to Nasty Boys. What kind of nasty boy would you like today? We got Ruckus, Hairbag, Gorgeous George. Don't wanna don't wanna try any nasty boys? We'll try our Mr. Sinister. I mean technically he's Mr. Essex, but he likes to go by Mr. Sinister because his cool little stripy cape makes him feel all neat and whatnot. Jeez, what a loser, Mr. Sinister. Is there a, I'm sorry, is there an impossible nasty burger I could order, please? Impossibly nasty. Well, of course, that's our, we ain't please here at Nasty Boys. Gosh. I would like an impossible nasty impossible burger. Impossible nasty burger, please. Thank you. With, uh, with one hairbag cocktail, if you could. Really appreciate it. With extra hair, if you, if you could throw that in there. Thank you. Thank you, waitress. Always extra hair. Waitress Sinister. They all just go by Sinister. Waiter. <laughs> sinister. Oh, jeez. All right. That was Mr. Sinister. What a, what a sinister guy that guy was. I'm going to talk about Magneto. Uh, of the three Magnetos we had, I'm going to talk about what I think is the coolest one. And this is the zero or whatever, the hundred. Um, I about said hundred point. No, it's set number 100. And this is the 65 point Magneto. He's Eric Magnus Lynchard because he has about a million different keywords. Uh, he has Savage Land and X-Men because, you know, I don't know anything about this story, but of course he has the X-Men keyword because if he's going to be good, we have to make him an X-Men keyword figure. He has one trait, which is really what you're mostly playing him for, and it's pretty gnarly. At the beginning of the game, roll a d6. On a 1 or 2, an opponent chooses one of their characters 75 points or less. But on a 3 through 6, so you have a higher chance, sometimes it could kind of suck. And you're like, oh man, they chose like Thug or whatever, you know? Uh, but if you, which this is a better odds for you anyways, on a 3 through 6, you choose an opposing character of 75 points or less. If the character is chosen, then place Magneto, and you don't have to choose if you don't want to, so that's cool. Then place Magneto and the chosen character and three lost tokens on this card. Lost, doo-doo, or like whatever the theme song was, and the little the lost bounce across the scene. Um, on this card, at the end of your turn, so only on your turn, Remove a lost token from this card. When the last lost token is removed, or a force has no characters on the map, place Magneto and the chosen character into their starting area in squares of your choice. So that's really dope. So before we go into the dial, let's let's see what this can do in in modern age. Uh, your team, if I roll high enough, uh, you just don't get Vulture. Your Vulture team just, like, doesn't get Vulture, and that... <laughs> That could really put a damper on the whole thing. Oh, you're playing Lockjaw? Cool, but no, you're not. You know, uh, Unseen, that's really neat. Um, I see him over there on the card, not on the force. Uh, basically, it could really, really mess up uh, mess up the team. Like, even Can you imagine a Blackbird team oh, losing the Blackbird? Blackbird? Oh, my gosh. Like, it would Just be... like you have to walk all your X-Men across the map. Yep. And it's just enough to just hinder you. Like, this is really where it matters in the first three turns. Like, if you don't have lock, I mean, if you don't have Vulture in the first three turns, like, I'm going to mess up your team. Like, I don't, if I don't have to worry about Vulture, you know, until whatever. And when he appears too late in the game, it's too late and it really sucks. So, this Magneto to me is the most standout figure of any. Because his ability just happens right away. And sure, on the very odd chance you roll that one to two. And hopefully it doesn't happen against a team where it's too important, but as we know, luck is luck, and sometimes you just don't have it, and it can happen at terrible times. Um, you know, someone's going to be like, all right, cool, take my uh, Flora Colossal, or like whatever, you know, and you're like, oh, man, that really sucks, oh, man. You know, so let's go ahead and get into the dial. He has six range, one bolt, flight, no other special combat symbols. He's the X-Men team ability. His first two clicks are a special speed power, ESD, and then... Outwit. His top dial looks like 7 speed, 9 attack with nothing, 15 defense with ESD, and then 2 damage with Outwit. His special... Click this around here. Special speed powers, Earth Bat, Neutralize, and Sidestep. Doesn't even have flight right away. And it's because of Sinister's Savage Land Machine. So, Sinister is still causing Magneto here a lot of strife. 
But once he finally breaks free of Mr. Sinister, he becomes kind of a beast. So he's five clicks long, and then after those first two clicks, he has a running shot for two of them with an 11 attack, pen blast, 17 defense with invulnerability, and then on click three, he has three damage. On click four and five, he has four damage. And then he has leadership, the rest of his dial, invulnerability, the rest of his dial, pen blast, the rest of his dial, with a 12, 18, four on his last click. And then he doesn't have a running shot on his very last click uh, with his best attacking damage. But I just think what this Magneto does right away on a team, he's just really, really, really dope. I mean, I think he's awesome. It is uh, it's a little insane that he's not, like, Silver Ring. Obviously, I don't know why you yeah. want to play too many of him, since you're just going to you know have to leave a ton off your force. But he just feels like a Silver Ring style. Yeah, you should do half your build. Yeah. But... Yeah, reminiscent of, like, the old copycat figure, where yeah. you're just, like... I mean, it's even worse, because at least Cat, you did get a figure. With this yeah. one, it's just, like... Your opponent planned to not have a figure, and, like, you didn't plan. Right, for sure. Um, but, no, I, I still think this, this may be... 66 really chance. Yeah. Yeah. I'd roll those dice. I think odds. He's, he's probably my favorite Ellie that uh, a set has come with in a while. Mm -hmm. um, just for the simple fact that, like, he's actually he actually does something interesting. All right. Um, I believe this was day five. I'm looking at Proteus here. Scott Porter's unboxing. His number is G004. He's an uncommon colossal. Uh, real name, name, Kevin McTaggart. So it's Moira's son for those not. What? Pretty interesting storyline there. Yeah, did you? were you not in the know? I no, I, I read very little X Men, like borderline none. I had no idea. I didn't know Moira uh, Taggart was a mom. Congratulations. I want to say guess. that <laughs> yeah, to your glob Xavier son. was the father, oh, but I'm not gonna on Xavier. Okay, cool. I guess like don't don't quote me on that. <laughs> okay, I... I'm gonna quote Simeon on that. Positive. All right, <laughs> quote me on that. Proteus is uh, Xavier's son. You heard it here first. Yep. He's got the Power Cosmic Team ability. He's got five range, one lightning bolt. He comes in at 400 points, 225 points, 150 points, or j just 20 for his one, one last click. He's got improved movement through blocking, and, I mean, he is a Colossal, so everything else, basically, at that point. Uh, what do we want to start with? Man, he's got Brute and Monster keyword, so... He could probably fit on a monster theme team. We'll see if he if he warrants that. He's got one one trait, warping reality, gives him barrier, shape change, and smoke cloud. Once per turn, Proteus can use barrier as free or smoke cloud as free, but only great markers. Other characters within three squares can't use it. So, since it's only three squares, this isn't as cool as I would hope it would be. But potentially, I mean, it won't work for, like, Cyclops, but I was going to say you could put down a barrier marker, and then if someone was in, like, the three squares, they wouldn't be able to shoot shoot through that, that barrier. But more likely, um, if you're parking him in, like, some hindering and someone tries to run up on you, they're going to have to stop in the hindering. So that's, like, the only thing that this is really going to help with. Uh, and since he's power cosmic, cosmic and has shape change, that means... You could potentially keep him safe from people with charge and battle fury. That's the one cool thing about this, I suppose. Hmm. He has one special speed power. It pos possesses some and mind control as free. When Proteus uses it and hits, you may choose that hit character can't make attacks. If you do, after resolu resolutions, place Proteus adjacent to the hit character and the target of range attacks until your next turn. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's free, so everything that I just like listed off there is just something that he can choose to do without taking an action token. He can still make an attack or move or do whatever. So you could do that, place him next to the person eight squares back, and then he can't be shot from range. 
that kind of keeps him safe. You've also just <laughs> wasted an action to move, but uh, a special attack power, which is just his Colossal Retaliation. He's got it on a few clicks, but the starting line that he's got it on is that 20-point starting line. Otherwise, you're going to have to get hit to it. You're going to have to hope to get hit to it. And his Colossal Retaliation is free. If no friendly character has been placed this turn, choose an opposing character that attacked Proteus since your last turn. Place Proteus such that he can make a close attack targeting the chosen character. Then do so. A hit character gets two fear tokens. Even if this power is lost, characters with fear tokens must roll a d6 when making an attack and negatively affect their attack value by half the result. Then remove one fear token. So you give a hit character two fear tokens. There's a black cat that used to work like this, where when she was targeted with an attack, she would roll the d6, and you'd reduce their attack amount by, like, half of her result. But uh, this is, like, big as those nightmare tokens that Goblin King used to use. Near as good as Goblin King was. But the just these fear tokens are pretty crazy because if they roll a five or a six and they get that minus three to their attack, that's pretty bad. You're gonna have in with like sevens or eights, and that's just kind of funny. Hmm. Um, his is colossal indifference. I don't know better. Stop. If Proteus starts on the twenty point starting line smaller characters except colossal retaliation so he doesn't even have toughness on he doesn't though which ruins his five five range uh, I like him because on his ret- I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, at 400 points you get it am I am I cutting out yeah you're cutting out a little bit there go ahead try to read the um uh, you said on his colossal click, on his retail click. Oh, on all of his uh, colossal retaliation clicks, he's got battle fury, which means opposing shape change isn't going to work. Like, like he'll be able to get through opposing shape change whenever he retaliates. The bat, his attack never goes higher than a ten. Mm, his yeah. entire dial, it's just a ten attack, even at four hundred points, <laughs> which you're paying a lot for a ten attack. Um, his speed is eights and sevens. Uh, he gets some force blast, but otherwise he just gets that uh, free mind control on the first two clicks of each starting line, except for his colossal retaliation. He doesn't have it. Um, he's got some perplex. It's either perplex or battle fury, and he's got battle fury on each one of the retaliation clicks. Uh, he gets a little bit of pulse wave with force blast, which is fun, but this guy's just overcosted for what he does, in my opinion. Yeah. Even on his 20 point line, like, he'll be really fun to, like, thematic build where you fight, like, fight, fight him against the uh, X Men. Um, but other than that, he's just, he's really cool and really unique. He's just so lacking in the stats department that it's kind of sad. Right on. I still think what he does is, like, kind of cool and, you know, kind of, like, pseudo-unique, kind of bunching all those together. But, um, yeah, he's really over Just that, that 10 attack really kills him. Man, I mean, I get it. Sure, but, like, man, it's low. It's low. When he's actually fairly thematic because, you know, like, his, his warping reality thing where he can make, like, barrier and stuff, and he's got shape change, that's all really cool. Nice. Um, opposing character can't use, like, improved movement if they're within three that's really cool but you should never have to pay get a 10 attack that's just i don't know why why they would do that like 400 points should be his most beastly mode like his rage monster mode where he just you know crazy goes hard in the paint you know he should just be a beast but just kind of doing his whole slow weak thing the entire time yeah, he's, i don't want to be mean but like this lumbering junk yeah, monster like that's what he's just going for i'm going to talk about jason simi i want to double check your connection really quick 
It's not cutting okay. out as bad, but like just in case, all right? All right. Jason Win- Wingard, or whatever. He's Brotherhood of Mutants, Hellfire Club, and Ruler Keyword. I'm going to talk about why I hate his keywords in a second here. He has eight range, one bolt, no special combat symbols. Uh, we're going to go over his dial before we go into the traits, because there's a lot of traits and special powers. So he has sidestep the first three clicks. He has smoke cloud the first three clicks. Shape change the first three clicks. He has willpower the first two. His last three, he has a special defense power. His last two, he has perplex, blades, and stealth. So that's kind of what his dial looks like. He has a 6, 11, 18, 1 uh, on his top click. He has one damage his entire time, and he kind of keeps the whole slow speed. Never goes below 9 attack, which is nice. His first trait out of his three is don't let the dreams of another life trouble you mind control when Jason uses it as range. So instead of as close, he has sidestep eight range, which is nice. Um, As he earns, he may count range and draw a line of fire from any character he hit this turn. And if he hits after resolutions, he can use mind control at no cost, but only to target a character that he hasn't targeted with mind control this turn. You, He may repeat this is what it says. So you can theoretically... Hit one person mind control. All right, count range line of fire from them. Mind control the next person. Basically, mind control everyone on their team at least once in a turn. So starting with an 11 attack is dope. You can get this guy perplexed up to a 14 at max, which is really awesome. And I think eight range sidestep with shape change uh, keeps him defensive enough to try to pull off that mind control. And I think if he pulls it off once, he's a chase. By the way, this is a Hellfire Club person, so he's 0.48. And then his next trait is Psionic Illusion. Psionic Illusion? Sure. Free. Choose a character on your sideline of 150 points or less at their highest point line. That's important. Generate a bystander printed on their card. Each bystander generated this way has a max one. You may use, the, you may activate this ability only twice per game. So twice per game, you can be like, uh, let's just take who, for example, Isaac, right? He's way under 150 points. And you can choose that cool, um, what is it, the TK Pog that has the white stripe fist. Like the autonomous TK Pog, right? Like that would be a pretty great bystander just to pop in for the game. Uh, you can take Dupes, Tiger, you know, stuff like that if you want. You can take Iron Man, any of Iron Man's of the three that he has on, you know, his dial. Any of the Iron Avengers and stuff. So I think his... Taking Pogs is really cool. You can't take Walking Woods. Obviously, Groot is more than 150 at his starting line, so this does limit the Colossals you can use. So, like, you can't use Carnage or Walking Woods, etc., stuff like that. But I still think this is a really dope ability, especially since it is a free action uh, to do. Because you can carry him all the way up the map, free action, make a make whatever, and then have it go hit someone, which is cool. His last trait is Inner Circle Club. He's the White King. Jason has Protected Outwit. He also has Leadership, but may remove the action tokens regardless of adjacency so like oh that's terrible no it's not it's freaking awesome so he has created leadership which is great so a character like this having really cool abilities but also he has leadership so you don't have to find a way to put it on your team is pretty huge and then his special defense power that i said he had for his last three clicks is mastermind and super senses so he does have super senses and shape change overlapping for one entire click which is kind of neat and then he can kind of stick around with some mastermind Here's the only part that bothers me with his keywords. His blades is called Swashbuckler, but he doesn't have the pirate keyword. And whether or not he's actually a pirate, sure, whatever. I mean, look at those boots. Those are some pirate boots if I've ever seen them. But uh, it just really bothers me that he's straight up got, like, Swashbuckler. He doesn't have the pirate keyword. Like, Nightcrawler just basically has a sword. And he, he was a legit pirate for a while, but still, he had the pirate keyword. Why not the pirate keyword, Jason? But um, I think Jason is... Probably, in my opinion, the best one of these chases. I know 75 points feels like a lot for, um, you know, five clicks, no damage reducers. But I think his mind control is just wicked cool. And his bringing in the other uh, pogs is really dope. So I think this is, like, a, like probably the best chase, honestly, in the entire set to have to, uh, to pick up. So, yeah, that's Jason for you. Yeah, on the right map, his mind control is just crazy. It's almost... It's not as crazy as the skull being able to go across map with it, mm. but it's, I mean, it's better if you manage to get close, you know. Um, if you get within range, then he's just going to potentially hit everyone on the opposing team. That bystander thing is, I like that they're, like, you know, reining in some, like, mechanics that they've noticed in the game. So bystanders were getting really popular with, like, Devil Dino and and stuff like that and they're making characters like this guy 
and well, this guy is actually the opposite of what I'm saying, but because he also makes bystanders. But um, what's the the Night Lantern? The oh, Dark Knight yeah, guy? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking the same thing. He might make a bit of a resurgence. You know, he kind of was played here and there. I know Devin played him on a team. So, oh, what is the Night Lantern dude's called? The evil <laughs> Dark Knight, you know, Chase Lantern guy. Yeah, Dawn Dawnbreaker. Dawn Dawn Breaker. Breaker. There it is. Yeah. Dawnbreaker. So, like, he might see more play because he's like, I'm going to free action, bring in him. And it's like, oh, okay, you make him. I'm going to go ahead and make another one, but with plus one stats. Boom, shakalaka. So, this, um, depending on how, how much we see this guy get played, um, Dawnbreaker might make a, a splash. Yeah, I think this guy definitely has, I mean, he'll be hard to do in sealed, but I definitely think he's got a place somewhere. For sure. All right. And last but not least, certainly not least, no. I'm going to go over Mojo, you number G022. Is it coming in clearly? Yeah, it's coming in clear. That's good. All right. I thought so, but. Uh, I, I normally sound great. Thank you. Uh, okay. well, <laughs> real name, Mojo. Mojo has the Mojoverse keyword, celebrity, monster, mystical, and ruler. So, I mean, monster and mystical are very easy to build around. Ruler's not bad. Uh, celebrity is actually fairly easy to build around. Can you make a modern Mojoverse team, Calder? Uh, let me tell you in about 2.5. I don't think so. <laughs> you can with this guy. I mean, once oh, this nice. guy comes out, you just have to play him at full and throw, like, a long shot on there, I guess. I think he's modern. All right, Mojo is a giant. Yeah, he is, baby. On a, Except on a two long shot's 55 points, so it's oh. five points over in a 300 game. That's fine. I'll do that. I'll do that okay. every day of the week. <laughs> 400 points, long shot, Mojo, 95 points under build. Let's do it. Yeah, that's how I build. Uh, he's got he's got two traits. His first one is behind the scenes. We've seen this before, but it's Mojo can't be targeted by opposing characters five or more squares away. So he's cutting your opponent's range down by quite a bit. His other trait is more action. Ratings are dropping. Whenever a character misses all targets of their attack, give Mojo a board token. Free, remove two board tokens, and either place Mojo anywhere on the map, 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 <gasps> or make an attack. So the the or make an attack is super boring to me, but being able to place him anywhere on the map is kind of bonkers. Like, you could, you could do some mean stuff with that, essentially. Um, he's got improved movement characters. He is a two-by-two. Two. Um... He's got one special speed power. It's keep the cameras on them. Sidestep when an opposing character uses sidestep after resolutions. Mojo may move up to two squares. There is a lot of sidestep in this game, so Mojo could almost, like, and some of the teams I've ran, so I run a lot of, like, Starfleet and Foot Clan and stuff like that. Foot Clan alone, every one of those little ninja guys has sidestep. And that's how you get them out there without using 10 actions or a taxi. If I was running that against this guy, he could get across the map by the end of, like, my second turn. Uh, granted, if I wasn't shooting at him. <laughs> so he's got uh, three point values, 250, 175, and 75. His dials are fairly short, but for 250, you get, let's see, you get... 13 clicks of life. He starts off with that special speed power, Pensai, 18 defense with invincible, and 4 damage with perplex. Uh, with 7 range, so 1 target, he's going to be able to to drop some people pretty easily with that 11 for 4. Um, I like all of his flavor text. He's got, ooh, how very interesting. Channel surfing. You'll never work in this town again. Like, he's... He's like the worst, uh, what is that, Harvey Weinstein oh, guy. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> He's like oh, no. a giant gross version of that guy. Oh, wait, that guy is a giant that, gross yeah, version of that say. guy. My bad. <laughs> but uh, he drops down. <laughs> His first two clicks, he's got that invincible, that Pensai, four damage with perplex. He drops down to steel energy and prob with three damage um, on his 175-click He's got that special movement with 
11 attack, Pensai, 4 damage, prob. Instead of Invincible, he's only got Invuln. And then if you start him at 75, he's got the special movement with TK. And his TK is, I'm the director of this show. So he gets to place huh. people where he wants them. Uh, 18, Invuln, and Perplex. I just like this. I liked the old mojo that we had. The old mojo did this weird thing where he kind of like bisected the map and said certain people couldn't cross, like, certain lines and stuff, mm. and they couldn't, I don't, it's been a long time since I played him, if you can't tell, but he made it very hard for people to get to him, and this guy, I think, is just really cool because of that second trait with the board tokens. It's similar to the trouble alert thing, where you almost kind of want to miss so that you get those board tokens. And if you can find a way to make your characters miss on purpose and then place Mojo anywhere on the board and maybe call something in, it's 11 for 4. I think that'd be fun. And it is really cool because it's when anyone misses, so by all means. Like, you don't want your opponent oh, yeah. to hit anything anyways. So, like, put it definitely gives you more, if there wasn't already, uh more uh, focus on making sure your opponent misses, you know, like perplexing if your defense or down their attack or blah, 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 whatnot. Yeah, or sinking like five probs into their attack. Yeah, heck yeah. I'd totally do that. Except, I don't know how many theme probs we're getting on the Mojo versus theme team. None, uh, unless we see more in this set, actually. It's going to be none. Uh, well, but, not yeah. You could play. That you is true. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at all these Mojos we can have on a team. <laughs> it's going to be great. Totally a great, amazing team. I do think he's really cool, though. I think he's dope, for sure. All right, should we move on to the WWE rules? Yeah! So, WWE Hero Clicks, we finally have um, the the pack, the abilities. So, there are there are eight. If you guys can keep with us here. Eight abilities, which is the circle uh, powers instead of circle with the red ring on the card and then a circle on the dial instead of a square. So, there are going to be a few speed powers. There's, there's four speed powers and four attack powers. So, fairly simple to get a hold of. Um, a lot of these are not too terribly different from their normal versions. Some are. Some totally are, but some are just not, which is cool. So, uh, do you want to go ahead? I will. I know. No, you type the last thing. So I'll go ahead and start about speed powers. When you flying leap, it is a power action. You get ignores hindering and characters. Move up to three squares, then make a close attack, modifying attack value plus one. If this character started adjacent to two plus ropes, then also modify damage value plus one. So that's really cool. I mean, I think that's fairly simple. The Street Fighter uh, team ability was power, move three squares, make a close attack. And then this is power, three squares. It's if you also ignore characters and hindering terrain. And if you start next to two plus ropes. So if you got the boxing ring or I believe blocking also counted as ropes and stuff like that, you modify damage value plus one. So flying yeah. leap, fairly I'm simple. I'm pretty sure it was hindering and blocking hindering become and blocking. ropes when using this power. Or when using a power that, like, you know, indicates ropes. Those are yep. considered ropes for that. So yeah, Flying Leap is, uh, it's like a weaker version of Leap Climb as far as what you can move through, but it's also like a pseudo charge, so a little bit of yeah. both. Speaking of pseudo powers, Slingshot is kind of like Force Blast. Uh, it's the same color as Force Blast, so it won't be entirely impossible to, you know, decipher this Panu power. It gives you knockback. But you may choose the direction you can knock back characters. Hmm. And uh, characters that can use charge or combat reflexes can also be knocked back. Finally. Yeah. I've wanted awesome. a power that could just ignore. Like, I get why charge and combat reflexes don't let characters get knocked back. But other than very specific situations, most of the time when you have a character with knockback, it's like, oh, I just can't use it ever because yeah. everyone has charge or combat reflexes. Um, and then free, make a close attack targeting an adjacent character that this character knocked back this turn. I I think this could work with a WWE character where you choose to knock them back like 
two squares behind you or something, and then they're still like adjacent to one of your corners or something like that. But I think this is even cooler if you use it like with that new Legion that has the the plus four or the minus four ability where he gets all the powers. He would get slingshot if you had WWE characters on your team. And you could shoot somebody like seven squares away for four damage and knock them back four squares towards you and then potentially make that free attack. So okay. <laughs> characters right that on. get... Also, uh, what's the one lady from uh, Battle World that gets all the speed powers? Oh, the Witch Queen LeFay or Spider Queen or one of those. Yeah, I think I it's remember. Witch Queen on like the 150-point line. Yeah. Uh, she also has Pulse Wave on that click, so you could Pulse Wave somebody for like three or four damage and knock them back towards you or off of, like, just choose a direction that wouldn't normally happen and they go off a ledge. So I really like that power. Right on. Next is Lightning Speed. Everybody was, like, up in arms, like, about Asuka. I was like, oh, she's really good, but we have to know what Lightning Speed does first. Well, now we do. It is power, ignores characters for this movement, move up to three squares, then make a close attack, then move up to two squares. So it is the weird version of hypersonic speed, which is great because it's a bronze power, like, you know, hypersonic speed. So it's just weaker that. It's a uh, move up three and then close and then move back or move away two. So it's pretty simple. You also ignore characters for it, which is great. Instead of having just like a plus two breakaway and ignoring characters while you're moving or whatever, it's just straight up ignore characters. So yeah, it's very cool. Lightning speed is pretty dope. Then after lightning speed, we get nimble, which is just... Ignores hindering, breakaway plus two, free, move up to one square. So this is kind of like a uh, sidestep, yeah. but more like uh, like leap climb, I guess, with like the plus two breakaway. Um, I like it. It's not it's not adding like a ton to the game. It's not it's not going to give you like a huge advantage. But the plus two breakaway is always fun. Uh, anytime you get a move for free is good. I think it's all right, but this is probably one of the more boring speed powers that they've shown us for here. For sure, for sure. And it's one of the ones so far that's, like, just nothing like stealth, like, at all. Like, in yeah. no way, shape, or form. <laughs> it's the it's definitely one of the outliers where it just yeah. doesn't really follow any kind of trend. Uh, next up, finally, moving on to attack powers. This is super strength, a.k.a. reversal. Adjacent opposing characters have breakaway minus two, free if this character has been given no actions or only a move action this turn, make a close attack targeting a character that missed this character or failed to break away from this character since your last turn. It's slightly more complicated. You have to treat, uh, keep track of a few more things. So, obviously, if you have to make a move action to get to them in the first place, uh, they probably succeeded at breaking away from you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they might have hit you. Um Maybe if they had something like Lightning Speed or Flying Leap, of course. So some like, um, no, not Flying Leap, never mind. I'm already getting it confused. But yeah, Lightning Speed, if they like hit you, then moved away, then you could move and then punch them. Or if they just straight up ran up and just punched you, then you're like, all right, bam, I'm just going to hit you for free. So that's really cool. Uh, yeah, Reversal, I like it a lot. I think it's dope. Yeah, it's a little bit thematic. And it also, I mean, it's, it's weird that we get a... Plasticity kind of power on an yeah. attack power. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next, we've got slam, which is the first. I Come think it's the first slam. one where it just says like close instead of power. Um, so this one can be used with charge, I believe. Uh, make a close attack. After resolutions, choose one. Give a hit character an action token, or place a hit character in a square adjacent to this character. This is what in cap should actually be in the game. Um, this is what WizKids kind of like charges you for points when it comes to in cap. They always like overcharge in cap characters for some reason. And this is what it should be. It should always be your, so you're doing your basic damage. Like if you do three or four damage, that's mm -hmm. what you're doing. And then you have an option afterwards to give them an action token or put them in a different square. So yeah. you're, you're picking them up and you're either, you're stunning them a little bit or you're just moving them and, I like this one a lot, mostly because you can use it with charge. Right on. And it's very thematic, WWE. Obviously, it's going to be close because I don't, I don't know who's walking in and shooting someone. 
in it. So it works. Next up is Stun, which is our Smoke Cloud variant. When this character hits plus one characters, a hit character modifies attacking damage value. Uh, sorry, damage negative one. Sorry, a hit characters modify damage negative one to your next interest damage. Uh, no, it is attacking damage. Blah, 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 blah. What am I doing? So, yeah, when this character hits one plus characters, a hit character modifies a, its attacking damage negative one to your next turn, which is pretty dope. We got stunned, you know, so that's a stone yeah. cold stunner, you know, something cool. Yeah, like they're that. not as effective. You can potentially no. hit them with, like, three stuns, and then they're at negative three stats. Exactly. It's pretty dope. <laughs> All right. And last in this one, uh, I, I don't know if this is the comprehensive list. Or if we'll get like a full pack, because this is just speed and attack powers. I guess we haven't seen any damage or defense I don't powers. I think we have, yeah. So this might be it. Um, it's submission hold. It's a brown power that looks just like poison, but with a red circle. Uh, it's free. If this character hasn't moved or been placed this turn, deal one damage to a target adjacent opponent ca opposing character. And then both characters gain a mobile until your next turn. So it's it's very similar to poison, because it's doing you know it's you can't have been moved or placed, and you're dealing one damage, and it's just one straight damage. It's not penetrating. It's not special in any way. So if they have a reducer, they're not going to take it. But even if they do have a reducer, you both get a mobile until your next turn, which means you can't be TK'd, you can't be you know sidestepped, you can't be carried. So I think that's like I think Asuka had the submission hold on her dial, and hers was every time she damaged somebody with it, she increased the damage by one. So nice. with her, she could potentially be doing four damage with uh, basically like poison, and that's a you know it's a free attack. I mean it's not even a free attack. It's just it's just something that happens. So if she manages to pull it off a few times. You know, against somebody who's got no reducers like uh, Star Fox or Sheriff Strange or something like that. It's pretty potent. It's dope. And I love that even if you can't deal any damage, it's not, like, useless. Like, sometimes, like, poison just like, well, it doesn't matter. I don't have it. It doesn't matter anyway. But it's like, no, it feels like submission hold. You're, you're here. We're, we're here in this together, brother. Yeah, you're even... You're, like, you're sticking oh, right by me. This doesn't I really hurt. You. It's like, yeah. all right, it might not hurt, but I've got you in the Boston Crab. Ankle lock! <laughs> You're not no. crawling away, That's so. Great. But no, that is the WWE rules, and I really dig them. They're, they're getting me super excited. It also says people were really confused about when the release was going to be, and they all say on this one, like, for some reason people were thinking August, but now uh, this um, article here says available September 2019, so... It says it will be, but like also some of these say um, post and present fan favorites. W Hero Cooks will not be a five figure booster, uh, but instead, and it also says it's going to be available in October 2019, but it says the mix match challenge, two player starter set, and the rock and sock will be in September. So maybe those are just going to come out like before, I guess. Still, I don't, yeah. Still super weird on the exact release date uh, for they're this doing, set. Yeah, they're doing. This is a completely new, like, setup for them, but they are doing, like, a fairly good job of promoting it and releasing, like, information about it and stuff. I mean, it's it's never oh, as quick. Oh, for sure. You want all the information right away, but I actually have to commend them because I think that they've done a pretty good job with this quote-unquote set. Right on, right on. All right, that, that's going to end our news section, ladies and gents. I want to go ahead and we're going to talk about something that's uh, pretty neat, if you ask me. This is going to be the Dial H for Hero Clicks Patreon. We are up to $40 a month, which is really awesome, since that easily covers the 25 for the podcast fees. And then also gives us a little more leeway in order to buy more things. I just bought myself a brand new mic, so that really helps pay for that. And also um, makes it feel cooler. Now we're going to start doing some giveaways. So I also want to start shouting out... All of our superheroes, sorry, super fans. So, uh, super fan slash super villain Ronnie Wineland, superhero the ruffian, little plastic superheroes, and superhero Lucas Van Holland, and super fan Orangerus or Robin Caves. Thank you guys so much for being super fans. I really appreciate. Of course, shout out to super fan Christian Bogan, 
uh, who was our given super fan at the beginning of this year slash end of last year. Um, you can go ahead and jump on there for as little as $1. Seriously, anything helps. Patreon's really dope. And if you do jump on for $1, you're going to be entered into a giveaway. This month will be drawn at September 1st. We're giving away a Ghost Rider Mammoth to first place. Second place is going to be getting a Reverse Flash and Steve Trevor. And third place is going to go ahead and be getting an Influence Ring. So we're giving out to the top three, which is really dope. We're also mailing every Patreon member that's given more than 10 bucks. So that's about uh, Superhero Vigilante Rank, I want to say. Uh, we'll be getting a Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy sticker or a classic Dial H logo sticker. So go ahead and check that out as we now move on to Community Tuesdays or Wednesdays this week. Uh, question of the week. There are dozens of us. Dozens! So the question is based around the video by Mr. Clixflix uh, filmed with Howard Brock. Um, it is a very long video. It's basically a mini podcast episode. And the question, what we're focusing on anyways, is what do you think about rebuying at sealed events? So basically your first two boosters were garbage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Can I buy two more ones? You know, two more. And then at team events, instead of building from six boosters uh, for a little bit of a higher price, you'll all be building from a brick. Uh, Simeon, what do you think about these uh, potential changes? I like, uh, I, I go, I've been going back and forth because I really like the idea of building from a brick with Team Sealed. I don't like it with X-Men because the MSRP on X-Men is way more than a normal set. Yeah. But I, as a whole, you're already buying six boosters for Team Sealed. It's just another four boosters. and So it's not like busted. It's not, you know, you're not getting every opportunity. It's also, if it's, I, I don't know how they do it, I guess. If they just give you ten boosters, I'd be against it. But if they yeah. give you a sealed a brick, sealed brick, yeah, I'd be totally for it because um, there's just less likely, you know, that like at Nats when the team that ended up winning pulled two red skulls. Um, not saying that you know they didn't work hard for it, but it does help when you have you know yeah. some really potent pieces in your pulls. And so if everyone had the same distribution, you know, as far as you know, either prime chase you know, same amount of super rares, stuff like that. You still would have a few people that got, like, the worst of it, but right. you're still going to have, like, stuff that you can build out of. And so I do like that. Um, I think if it comes to, like, singles sealed, I'm kind of against it. Um, just because of the simple fact where if you go into an event thinking, like, oh, this is going to cost me $30, and then it ends up being where, you know, just like the hive mind, the consensus becomes, you know, bring $60 just in case your first 30 buys you nothing. Right. And then you're, you know, you're buying $60 worth of product that, you know, you probably either already have or don't want, or, you know, maybe you pull something good on your second one. So I, I don't like it on the singles side. I do like it on team sealed. That's, and I've been going back and forth. So that's as, that's as good as I can do for now. Okay. Ah, uh, the way I kind of feel about it is it's gonna. Both of these are still hiking up the price, um, but I think they do it for a good and enough reason. So, building from a brick, it's basically fifteen dollars a booster at most team events. It's only around ninety dollars to pay for your six boosters. So that means a standard size set is gonna be one hundred and sixty dollars, which is thirty dollars more than a normal brick basically would actually cost you so it's still just kind of subpar going for it it's going to cost you a little extra to get into team events that's okay because uh, i think this overall evens the playing field out tremendously so i'm actually really cool with building from a brick i think we'll obviously need more build time since we all have more boosters that's kind of a given so it's going to make the event a little bit longer um just by simply more product means more sorting and whatnot for the normal single sealed team events uh, at Gen Con, they did utilize this. They did a mulligan. Uh, super fan Lucas Van Holland used it quite a bit uh, in both his team matches when we only did, uh, I believe, four boosters for our 2v2 team sealed. Uh, he had just terrible pulls. He didn't like them. So he went ahead, mulliganed. It obviously cost them more money. Uh, and then they couldn't use their original pulls. So as soon as they decided to mulligan, you couldn't use your original polls. You had to stick with whatever this was. You could not mulligan again. And they allowed the mulligan um, at, right at the beginning or at the 
right before a top cut. So if you didn't like whatever, um, but here's the bad thing. Uh, a few things happened at, that I didn't care for. At top cut, someone mulligan, I'm not going to say who, someone mulligan um, because they knew who their matchup was already, and then they got a new team and rebuilt it specifically for that matchup. That should not be allowed. You should not know who your matchup is going to be and then decide, oh, no, my team's not good. Better try it again and then specifically build to beat this matchup. That's super not cool IMO. I think they should not know that information if they are going to decide to mulligan for top cut. I also think mulliganing straight up for top cut is also a bad idea, not just for that reason, but for how much time it's going to add to the event. You can either mulligan right away or just not mulligan at all. I think yeah, mulliganing at top cut uh, takes too much time. So I think if they want to do the top cut thing, it should be like when they do constructed to the top cut and then sealed in the top or like sealed and then constructed in the top. You know, I, I wouldn't want to do the sealed and then have like people that, I mean, it would make sense if you barely eked out and you were bottom of the top, like you just barely made right. the cut and you were like, this team is not going to work for me. But like you said, if you know who you're playing against or if you see like multiple variations of like a team and you're like, man, I'm going to need a lot more outwit than what I've got. Yeah, yeah. That, then it becomes a situation where you're like paying to get a boost over your opponents, which mm -hmm. is like the opposite of what sealed's supposed to be. You know, yeah. you're already getting like a benefit by using the maps that you brought potentially. Um being able to bring in more cash than like the opposition and which uh, with the mulligan, you only get to do it once and there's no guarantee that you're going to pull what you need. So I get that, but it does add a little bit of right. kind of iffiness in my opinion. For That's sure. my, the technical term is iffiness. <laughs> iffiness. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Right on. All right. Well, you can go ahead and hit us with the first one from Facebook then. All right. First one is the longest one, but it's not it's not bad. Um, so citizen Jeff Bollier says, I don't want to watch a 50 plus minute video. So sorry, Mr. Clicks Fix, um, <laughs> which Oof. I can't blame him. Like, you know, no, it's uh, in the middle of the day. It was I mean, it was getting posted in the middle of the day and a lot of people are at work and stuff. Uh, I did go back and watch it because there was information that I wanted to hear about and stuff that um wasn't even about this mulligan stuff. Uh, he goes on to say, is the only thing to come out of this that players in Sealed can set aside their first booster to purchase a second? I am firmly against this. Sealed is a great equalizer. It doesn't matter how fortunate your previous pulls have been or how much money you've spent. Everybody in the event has equal chances based on a single buy-in. I've played in Sealed where my pulls were garbage. You probably have too. It happens. That doesn't mean that you or I should be able to say we want to pay for a do-over. I've also been want, been to events where I literally couldn't afford to buy another booster where that was an option. Is there anything else in the video to discuss? And then I went on to, I said uh, about the team sealed being um, like, like a brick. And he said he did like that idea. So uh, I can't disagree with him completely because... Out of my venues, two of them don't allow rebuys, and the one that does, they're just like budgeting. I'm just like, I bought like a set, or maybe it's just, you know, I don't need more of the set, and so I just don't do rebuys most of the time. And so I agree with him there. And sadly, when I passed up on the rebuys last time, there was bases pulled. Oh, was that really the the rebuy one you guys did? That sucks. That was when uh, oh. Devin and uh, another guy the guy in front of me both pulled it. And I was like, oh, it hurt me so bad. Oh. Ooh, that's rough. That's really rough. Is that it for that comment? Yep, sorry. That was okay. right uh, Jeff on. Boyer. Right, Citizen right Jeff Boyer. on. Citizen Loyal Miller said, I would say the one thing I like about doing blind polls is it evens out the playing field a lot of the time. Sure, sometimes you don't pull well, but that challenges you uh, to think harder. I have won with a super rare on my team, and I have lost with a super rare, so that's kind of cool. 
Uh, and then, oh, sorry, he kind of goes on to say, I feel the only time you should have the option to rebuy is when you cannot physically make the build total. I know we did AI, we did 500-point teams for sealed, and some people only had 400 points. The only 2x2 two two they got were Dune buggies, and they should have been offered a new pack. I can kind of, I can dig that, totally. If you physically just are under-costed that many times, being allowed to rebuy is cool. Yeah, we Go did a, one of the venues, a 400 point sealed for AI, and I pulled, which was like the Cree guy, and I pulled Eternity. And being able to play Eternity at 250 with support was really gross, and sealed, it was, it was, it was bad. And that's why most and then there's people that like had 300. Dune. Yeah. Yeah. Dune buggy, like, as somebody's two-by-two two is, like, really sad in comparison. Um, all right. Chance McCall said, Personally, I see benefits and negatives. However, I think the creativity that comes from Sealed might suffer from the changes. I agree for Team Sealed. I think if you've got a lot of, of chances, like, a lot of choices, then you're going to see a lot of the same, like, teams being built. Um at Nationals, I didn't pull any of the stuff that I kind of thought that I'd be guaranteed to pull in Team Sealed. I was, there wasn't a single Voyager. There wasn't a single Medusa. Uh, there was one Crystal, and I, I was banking on getting, like, one or two of those at least. And I think if you had a whole br brick, you'd have you'd definitely have at least one for each team. Okay. Yeah, right on. Banzai, Treen Sapling, or... I believe I'm like ninety percent sure. Still isn't correct to me, so I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna keep going with it. Um <laughs> see now I can't I think he maybe did correct me or not. Uh but Tiemu, pretty sure. Might be wrong. Who knows? Uh, I agree with you hundred percent on this. He's replying to Loyal Miller. Uh in addition, it's always in the back of my mind that our store keeps running out of the more popular sets, especially due to the unreliable supplier. Yeah. I could see that too, especially if they decide to implement this at Worlds coming up. That a lot of a lot of battle royales will be DC Rebirth or Black Panther, and that'd be really sad for me. Ooh, yeah, for me. If they recommend Earth, it's going to be a rough couple of days where I have to figure out what to do with my my time. That'd be visually Eric Sexton game, says. Right, by the way. All right, keep going. Oh, yeah. Uh, Eric Sexton says, Use your luck. Map pulls is enough to make the cut, cut. But you know you would be better stuff. You would get better stuff if you wanted a chance at winning. And this might give you that. It's definitely true. Um, there are times in Sealed where you just pull, like, the worst two rares and then you just don't have, like, a great uncommon or common. Luckily, WizKids has kind of been correcting this by putting uncommons and stuff, but it's possible to not pull those and still pull bad rares. That's yeah. super rares, even. It can be rough. It can be real rough. Totally not putting Captain Venom on every team, says, I think it's great. Uh, with one mulligan and one brick, I think it really does meet the middle for competitive and sealed. Out of 30, only three did it. That shows strong options while allowing that randomness in the front of sealed to shine. So that's a pretty positive, uh, pretty positive note there. All right. Matthew. It should be you get what you get. Buying in again sounds like a money grab. Also promotes he who has the most money wins. So uh, with the with the mulligan system where you'd only be able to buy in again, it's not so much who has the most money, but it does increase the assumed cost. So it's not, you know, if some guy shows up with, you know, $10,000 and he's just going to buy every brick and then he's like, oh, no one, no one else had uh, any sealed pulls because I'm the only one that has bricks. Like, that's not an option. That's not going to happen. Sad. If I could. Sad. Uh, but any... <laughs> Anyhow. I wish I could just show up and be like, I'm the only one who can play Sealed, <laughs> like, so oh, I, I win. I got first because I have all the boosters. Um, so it is it is a little bit of a money grab, I'd have to say. But I think it's 
also partly that they're trying to fix what a lot of competitive players don't like about sealed. So, okay, yeah. Citizen Mr. Clicksflix said, I feel like he might have a pretty solid uh, grasp on this question. Uh, I don't know why. I just feel like it's uh, it's there. I really like both as it smooths out the peaks and valleys that people can experience with their polls. Okay, it's pretty simple. Like yeah. That. And then on Facebook, he also said, I like it a lot. And he, what a, what a and he linked timer. the uh, video. So if you can't find the video, you can you can find it on our Facebook page. It's on that question. Yeah, he's double tapping us with that. Right on. What a guy. What a guy. All right, go read another one, just because that was kind of short, kind of together anyways. All right. Matt Grachinos, Greg, 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 uh, no. So that's why everyone says to call him Matty G. Yeah, it's Matty Gry Nachos is how you pronounce it, I think. That sounds right. He says, I hate, hate, in all caps, I hate the mulligan idea. Um, so just, he, he did make, you know, make sure to specify the mulligan idea. So it's the team sealed brick buying idea or, you know, rebuying for team sealed or one of the other options, but was use all caps for the, I hate part. So that's how you know uh, he, he means it. It's the all caps. Oh yeah. And that's the last one we got on Facebook. Oh, right on. Then the last one on Twitter, Citizen Collectible. I probably should double check that before I uh, straight up insult this guy. Yeah, see, he's a vigilante. Look at that. Look at me. He's like, oh, shake my head, call it, and suck. Uh, vigilante Collectible said, Heroclix is a business before it's a game, and this is how they stay in business. However, this may price some kids out of the game, and kids getting interested in the game determines the long-term future. So he kind of brings up, like, kids here. Um... I think locally at your venue, they don't have to get a mulligan if they don't want to. It's just an option, so that's not bad. And then there's no team sealed at your venue. So I have seen younger kids be in the game, obviously. We know that, that have shown up to bigger national and worlds tournaments. But I don't think this is going to stop any new kids uh, from joining the game. I think if they're already showing up to that tournament or whatever, their mother or father is already paying for quite a bit. So this is just a little extra like overall which i know it kind of sucks paying like more money and whatnot like for teams uh i would totally do it as a player i totally understand i think it works um but i think overall i don't think this is going to stop any kids uh from getting in and out of the game i think normally when anyone especially a younger person joins the game there are a bunch of people who are just like hey i have all these extra hero clicks just take them for free to get them started you know so i don't think this is really going to be detrimental in that aspect to be honest no i don't think that try this out which is what they should do it should be tried out but not it shouldn't be like you know the new thing going forward until we actually get a few events with um but i think it's it's great that they're trying to you know get community feedback and work with stuff like that and while we're on the subject of uh, Mr. Howard Brock and ROC stuff, should we talk a little bit about the announcement made today? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so what was the announcement made today? Sad, <laughs> sadly, <laughs> um, today they, they announced that going forward until 2020, any R tickets, which are, you know, win maps mostly, uh, they've been selling that – they're running out of the 2019 uh, prizes, and so WizKids is cutting them off a little bit. And so, going forward, up until until 2020, um, when you order an ROC kit, whether it's a Winamap, a regional, a state, whatever it happens to be, you'll have a 50/50 chance of getting a 2018 con exclusive or a 2019 con exclusive. Uh, they also said there would be maybe some ID cards or equipment thrown in there. So it's it's a little bit sad if you're looking for a 2019, but there's still some solid 2018s that are still, like, pricey enough to get that it wouldn't be bad to get them. And honestly, there's some 2018 ones that I don't – or 2019 ones uh, that I don't really care to get. So um, it's not the worst news, but it is something worth mentioning, I think. 
For sure. Something worth uh, keeping in the back of your mind. Going to win a map. You know, yeah. Like, if you hey, if you happen to be a judge. Yeah. So that's pretty important. You know, ordering in things, being like, man, better let everybody know. We had a 2018 con exclusive. It's, it's probably going to change, and people might want, not want to pay. Like, one of maps from like, 5 10 bucks, pretty cheap anyways. Um, but people might not feel super up to it when it's like, 2018 exclusive? Bummer, you know? So that's cool. It's good to know. Moving on to yeah. Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. You said it ain't about winning. Well, not all the time. Play a team you want to. Uh, sure, it's not going to win worlds, but darn it, it's a fun way to lose a game. I did a pure shield agents team. Only Nick saw the inevitable, but I enjoyed the ride. So he's basically saying play a team that is just super fun, a little thematic, that you know is probably not going to win. Like, play a team where it doesn't. You know, it's not an X-Men team with, like, five Wolverines and then a bunch of Mario Mac Taggers with good perplex and carry and blah, 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 blah. Or maybe it's not a, a Vulture team all the time. Maybe it's just like, hey, I'm going to play a team full of Jack of Hearts or something, you know? Or I'm going to play a Spider-Man <laughs> family team with, like, the do- with the spider buggy or whatever. Like, play a fun thematic team even if you think it's not going to do very well just play it and even i i would honestly say play a bad team like a really really bad team on purpose one of the most fun i had let me let me double check this was playing this mercenary theme team and if you know how mercenaries work so the deadpool ones are cool because when they die they go to your opponent's force and they score 35 points potentially but the Harley Quinn mercenaries literally say if your force only has characters named Mercenary, which is both the Deadpool mercenary and the Harley Quinn mercenaries, they're both just named Mercenary, so it works for both. At resolutions, KO all friendly characters named Mercenary. So what I did was, I played a team of just Harley Quinn mercenaries, 15 points, just Deadpool mercenaries at 15 points, and one thug in the back. Sorry, it wasn't a thug because that would break the team. It was uh, what was the idea? Suit henchman. One suit. It was basically like a game of chess. So you had 300 points of these mercenaries taking up space to keep people away from the suited henchmen. And once they finally killed the suited henchmen, the entire force just died. It was awesome. I thought it was hilarious. Um, it led to some quick games. It led to some fun games. But either way, even though you knew like there's like, a super obvious way to just instantly just kill my entire team, I still thought it was super duper fun. And I had a great time. I thought it was awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, that'd uh, be if you ran against like Hawkeye. But, oh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, <laughs> everything's rough. If, rough if you... Against Hawkeye, yeah, come on, man. Uh, he also says credit goes to Sam. Uh, I mean, this you one. can always just. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's me. to say that, get that out of the way. <laughs> uh, and you I can also want like, to uh... actually use a full starter set, like a Ooh. fast forces or a starter set. Like most of the time, you or two of the figures and maybe fill it in with other stuff. But if you just play like a full starter set, like the new Star Star Trek starter, starter set, isn't great. Like you won't win with it, but it is a lot of like good shenanigans, and it's like hard hard to take eighteen defenses, you know, and you've got probs and stuff. Right on. That's all I have to right say on. about that. <laughs> all right, sweet. And I know uh, our win of app is this Friday in South Dakota, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I am judging it because uh, I'm also sponsoring it, which is really cool. And I'm playing two teams that are just really, really bad. Uh, we're doing Marvel versus DC, and I am playing an all-Marvel X-Men Native American team, which I think is really cool. Uh, I like to collect Native American figures anyway, so I think it's really dope. There's a lot on the X-Men team, which is really cool. And then I'm playing on my DC theme. It's basically just going to be Lex Luthor, God of Apocalypse, with a ton of suited henchmen. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to see if we can... Use his little TK, bring him over. Like, they're both just, like, really bad teams, which is great. But I just want to have fun. Um, and then, do once again, talk about Jedi Legend. He did say credit goes to Simeon. I already said that, I know. But, like, uh, and all my years of doing this, he's never once, I don't think, he used, uh, used one of my ideas. But, you know, Simeon just starts, and he's like, oh, I guess Simeon's got a tip of the week. I'm like, okay. Okay, Jedi, Maybe, be yeah. that way. All right. I'm sure. Anyways, I'm sure you've had a good idea. I, I mean, probably have. Maybe one or two. But you just missed that episode. 
that one episode. He's too busy drinking his coffee ranch. You know how it is. Yeah. 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 So, I don't that think brings us... Thing. That, that sadly, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of the show. I just want to go ahead and say, you can find us on Podbean and iTunes. Our sponsors, of course, CoolStuffInc.com. We're our Twitter at Dial H4, that's the number four, Hero Clicks. We're on Facebook at Dial H, F-O-R-E, F-O-R-E, F-O-R, uh, four, not like that four, but just normal four, Hero Clicks. And we're on YouTube, Dial H for Hero Clicks. Our email, I love getting emails. We haven't gotten an email in a really long time. Send us questions, send us whatever, right into Twitter or even right into Facebook. Send us some questions. It leads to a lot of good discussion topics. Our email is dial H for Hero, sorry, dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. And then, of course, we have a Patreon and a Red Bubble. Do you want to read us out, Simeon? Yeah. Brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Field products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. Thank <laughs> you.